Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This is a sponsored episode by Regila Beauty. As women, our skincare needs are constantly evolving and changing. So it can get a little confusing when we need a new item to fit into our existing skincare routine to tackle new issues. Regila Beauty has a wide variety of items that are built to fit into your routine, whether you have youthful skin, mature skin, you're expecting, or you're even a new mama. If I told you that you could enjoy these benefits without the inconvenience or expense of changing your current skincare routine, but just by adding something wonderful and affordable to it. Skin that looks and feels more even-toned, firmer, hydrated, radiant, smoother, smaller pores. Well, Regila Beauty has the Hydrating Serum, and it is that something wonderful that I'm speaking of. It is perfect for busy moms at any stage of motherhood, whether you're trying to conceive, currently pregnant, nursing, or preparing for an empty nest. Our serum is the clean beauty, fuss-free add-in you've been looking for. It's formulated to be non-irritating for even the most sensitive skin. It's full of beautifying botanicals featuring hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and vitamin C, the ultimate anti-aging trifecta. It sinks right into your skin effortlessly between your current toner, moisturizer, without feeling greasy or sticky. It's unscented and also free of toxic ingredients that could harm your health. Get it today by visiting Regila's Amazon shop at amazon.com slash Regila, R-E-J-A-L-L-A, or click the link in the description box now. All right, welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so happy to have you back with us. Today on the show, I have Dr. Nicole Bradford with us. Welcome. Hi, so great to be here. Thank you so much. Yes, well, Nicole, uh, doc, would you like me to call you Dr. Nicole, Nicole, Dr. Whatever Bradford? You feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to call you Nicole, if that's okay. Sure. And I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about yourself, your journey, and what is it that's lighting you up right now? What is it that you're passionate about, truly? Well, my life, I'm originally from Austin, Texas, and I am the youngest of six children. And I went to college at Grambling State University. I have three amazing children. Two are in college, a junior and a sophomore, and my oldest graduated from Hampton University about three years ago. So I'm married to my high school sweetheart. And right now, what I'm truly passionate about is having the opportunity to go out and connect with others and encourage them, especially during a time when we have so much stress and anxiety, and there's so much negativity going on in the world. I just want to encourage people to live their best life and to remember that flame. When we were young, we were excited. We loved life. We had the zest for life. Nothing could hold us back. So just tapping into that, our younger self, where we didn't worry about what people thought about us and we didn't worry about how our hair looks. We were just enjoying life. And then we transitioned into being adults. And so we're a little bit more timid and we're watching everything that we do. And does that really serve us at the end of the day? So that is what I'm truly passionate about, maintaining the flame. Yes, I love the way you put that so much. It literally gave me like chills from my head to my feet because it's so true. When we're children, we play so freely and we have so much joy in our hearts and we lose that. So I would love for you to speak on that more, how we can connect with our inner child. How can we bring that, that flame back when we're feeling low, when we're feeling yeah. anxious, when life? <laughs> well, I know, you know, we all hear it all the time that it's, it's so cliche and easy for people to say, oh, just be positive about it. Just be positive. But life can be truly tough mm -hmm. from time to time. I know for myself, I lost my sister number five. We always say our numbers. I'm baby number six, unexpectedly at the age of 48. 
Mm-hmm. And so, you know, she was planning her 50th birthday. She was so excited about it, but she never made it to that moment. And then in addition, in 2019, I brought my mom and dad to live with us here. And I lost my dad in 2021. And I just lost my mom in April. So 10 months apart after 61 years of marriage. So going through those experiences taught me, hey, Nicole, you need to take a break. You need to pause, take a step back, and you've got to remember the days of your youth, when you loved life, when you were so excited about life, because if you dwell on the negativity or if you hold on to the grief, you're not going to be able to be excited to be here because it's a privilege for all of us to still be hanging around here. And, And now that we have that privilege and that opportunity, let's make the most of it. We were leaving my son's college football game this past weekend and my baby that's 25 years old we're in the gas station and I'm just dancing and I'm like come on Kristen show me and she's like mommy no we're, we're not doing this <laughs> but the lady at the counter is like yes of course get it that's what I'm talking about so there are people that would love to have that energy and excitement and you never know you might inspire someone else But just living that life and being courageous enough Mm -hmm. to say, you know, I'm going to do something different today. I used to love to go roller skating. I think I'm going to go try it again. And that will help you tap into your inner self. And then you have the strength and your courage to keep going. Going, that's a beautiful answer. And that journey that you took us through, I want to say that I see you and the fact that you're here today sharing your wisdom with us for the journey that you've had in such a short time, like thank you for sharing that with us. And I see you and I'm here with you as we are going through grief. Like you just said, you such short periods of time, what has helped you get through these grieving periods? And did you allow yourself to completely feel the grief? Like, how did you do, how did you move through that? Over time in my life, I've always been the individual, I'm an overachiever. So I set these goals and I just keep moving and keep moving, but I never really live in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so I thought about my sister, I lost her in 2018. And so it was a shock because I've never had anyone that close to me to pass away. But then when I lost my parents, you know, it's just like a baby chick, a baby bird. You lose the wing. I had two individuals that had me. They're like, we got you, Nicole, on both sides. And so I lost my dad and, you know, I was a little broken and I'm trying to keep pushing forward. So I went from empty nester, so professional empty nester to caregiver. Mm -hmm. And then when I lost my mom, I lost my win. And so I had to take a step back. And so I know it's only been a couple of months, but it was very, very difficult for me. I I didn't know what was next. I couldn't see, you know, how to function. But then I always remembered that they said to keep going. They started at very, very, very humble beginnings. And my parents didn't graduate from high school, but they were very successful in the end. And I know that that's not what they would want me to do. So I had to, which was very unlike me, but I took about six months and I just had to take a huge step back. And I think people need to understand after you get a a serious blow in life, It's okay to take a step back, reflect on those memories, reflect on the situation, learn from it, and just take one step at a time to get through the situation. So it's still very difficult to think I will never hear their voice ever again. But at the same time, I know that I can get through this and I can be better because of it, because I'll remember their teaching their wisdom and the love and their legacy still lives on. Yeah, absolutely. And as you're speaking, is there a lesson both from your mom and your dad that is helping you move forward today that plays in your ear as you're like moving through the days? Is there little voices in there? Is there a lesson that you could share with us, either from your mom or your dad that is like your... Yes, I I would say from for both. I was just sitting right before we began and reflecting and thinking about things. But my mom always said, whatever you start, you need to finish. Mm -hmm. You don't quit. And I know when I was at Grambling State University, moving from Austin, Texas, the only one to leave home. I called her and I'm like, okay, yeah, this was cool, but this is not for me. I need to come back home. And she's like, no, ma'am, that's, that's not an option. 
And so there was even a day that I packed up my entire car, put all my stuff in it. I drove home and she was standing on the porch and she says, uh, what are you doing? I said, well, daddy said I could come home. Everyone's home. And she was like, and I know you're not listening to him. Get back in the car and drive six hours back now. And I got back on the road. But whatever you start, you need to finish. And for my dad, being an entrepreneur, they owned several rent homes and had a very successful janitorial business. He always said, all you need is one yes. And I think in life, when we're starting new businesses for ourselves, or we're taking a new adventure, we're so afraid to take that step. And then when you continue to get negative responses and you start to question yourself, no one's going to buy this. No one's going to listen to this. No one's going to believe in me, but all you need is one yes. And that will reignite that fire for you to keep pushing on. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Those are two beautiful lessons for us to hold on to and write down. Like I just wrote them down. So write them down guys. <laughs> Thank you for sharing those lessons with us. So I want to shift a little bit and talk about relationships because I know that's a passion of yours is relationship, family relationships, and the dynamic of that. I would love for you to speak on that. So when I think about relationships, I think back again to my younger years, my mm-hmm. family was so important to me. And, but as I've shared with you, with me being the youngest of six kids, of course, people would kind of just say, oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about. You're the youngest. Mm-hmm. We're not listening to you. But then as you transform and become an adult, you have to set those boundaries. And people don't like boundaries because I used to be able to tell you to do stuff and you would jump and do it. Or, you know, and friendships and, and relationships, I, this is the way that we begin the relationship. And then you decide, you know what, I don't like the way you speak to me. So we have to decide, especially when we're maturing, that what works for us and what does not. And making sure that number one, we're communicating effectively. We're sharing our feelings with the individual. But most importantly, we're making choices that's going to make us happy at the end of the day. Because sometimes you can just give, give, give to everyone, but you have nothing left for yourself. So just as you advocate for others, when we're parents, we advocate for our children. When the the roles reverse and we're caretakers, we advocate for our parents. But when do you take time to advocate for yourself? So it's great to have those relationships, but make sure that those are healthy relationships because at the end of the day, if they're not healthy, they're not going to be beneficial for you. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any tips on setting those healthy boundaries? Because that one is a huge one. And it's yes. big for us, like you said, because we initially teach people how to treat us. There so setting boundaries sometimes feels so uncomfortable inside because yes. you've said yes to something for so long and all of a sudden you're saying no. And so the other person is almost caught off guard. Yes. And so it's kind of like that push pull. And uh-huh. so if you have any tips on setting, like just slowly setting these boundaries for yourself after you've come to the point where you realize something does not feel right. And and I'm glad, I love the way you say it because I said that, I say that all the time to my children, you teach people how to treat you. Mm -hmm. They're only treating you that way because you allow it. And so I would say some tips for me, as I talked about in my family, learning to communicate, learning to express myself, From there, I transitioned into my married life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it can be very difficult when it comes to your in-laws, because when you're walking into the in-laws, I need for you to be this type of (laughs) daughter-in-law. I need this holiday. This is what I like. This is my Christmas. This is what I celebrate. This is the tradition that we have established. So you need to fall in line. And I always think about the movie that I love, Meet the Falkers. I love that movie because there was a circle. And he said, you're not in this circle, but you have to determine for yourself, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay if I'm not in your circle, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to let you know my expectations. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of this family. I respect this family, but I'm going to do what makes me happy. So I'm going to communicate to you that we're going to establish these holidays. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have that conversation with your spouse, but make sure it's clear to your in-laws. It's not going to be popular. This is the way I choose to talk with my children Mm -hmm. because a lot of us think, oh, back in the day and that's not going to work and this is what you need to do. 
but it may not work for you. Mm -hmm. So communicating, expressing yourself and slowly making it, setting those boundaries one step at a time. Yeah. So it may be a holiday here, or it may be a birthday, or it may be some way you discipline, but it's just slowly one step at a time. They'll adjust, yeah. it'll be uncomfortable, but they'll come around and it'll make sure that it'll make you happy. Yeah. And I love the way you phrase it, say that it's having that awareness to say, it's okay if I'm not in the circle yet, I am going to express myself, even though I'm not in the circle, yeah. because a lot, I'm a recovery people pleaser. I'm not going to lie. So it is, it feels good to make people feel good. Oh, yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. sometimes we do that at the expense of ourselves. So what you're saying is, Yes, it's going to feel uncomfortable, but put yourself in that uncomfortable situation for a little while to get the happiness of that later because you'll be happy later on. That's right. Look yes. Look forward yes. to. <laughs> so, yes. So, yeah, definitely recovery people pleaser here. And so, as we're talking about boundaries and loving up on ourselves for that recovery people pleaser, because my listeners definitely relate to that. That's why they're here. And what would you say? to keep them going as they're making people not comfortable. <laughs> what would uh -huh. you say? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Because yes. it does require that discomfort. And how do we sit in that discomfort as we're moving forward? Well, I always say you have this one special friend in your life, someone that you would always, if they'll pick up the phone right now, and they're mm -hmm. saying, hey, Nicole, X, Y, and Z is happening. Yeah. You're not experiencing it, but you can just rattle it off and you need to do X, Y, and Z. And you need to do step one, two, three. Well, I need for you to take a step back and pretend as if you're your own best friend. Mm -hmm. You have to get to the point where you love yourself that much. Maybe jot it down, write down the situation, read it to yourself, and then pretend as if, if this was my girlfriend contacting me, what would I say to her? Yes. Would I tell her to suck it up? Mm -hmm. Or would I tell her to do the following steps? So when you take that type of approach, then you're thinking differently. Mm -hmm. You're take, removing yourself from the situation. And if you wouldn't want your girlfriend to experience it, why are you settling for it? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> you just hit the nail on the head. When we talk to our best friend, we have so much to say. So yes, yeah. put yourself to look outside for a second. It gives you so much more perspective. Absolutely. Yes. And so, yes, I love that about loving yourself and treating yourself as your own best friend. Yeah. And so mental health right now is a big topic, especially in the kids, right? Yeah. And how can we as mothers help with that anxiety that the kids are feeling, the depression that the kids are feeling, the numbers just keep rising. And as moms, it is our responsibility to help these kids and their mental health. But sometimes we just don't know where to start. Do you have something that you can speak on that for us? Yes, I would say when I was a principal of a school and also just an educator there on campus, I would have so many students that would come to me and they're, hey, Dr. B, this is going on and this situation is happening. But it was surprisingly how many children would come to me and they didn't, they weren't comfortable going to their parents. And that was very concerning for me because as parents, sometimes we believe K through fifth grade, I'm on it. You're polished. You have the best lunchbox. You have the best backpack and I'm going to be there for you. Well, you know, the time that they need you the most are fifth grade and on and even into the college years. And because they're dealing with the peer pressure and the peer pressure is so intense. So I would say as parents, what the information that I would always try to give or the advice is, for example, I had a young lady that was in school and her parents said, we want her to be a doctor. We need her in all AP classes. And this is our plan for her. Well, it sounds great. Have you talked to your daughter? She doesn't know what's best for her. Oh, okay. So the, the student would always come back to me. I'm struggling in this classes. I hate this. I don't want to do it, but I'm going through this for my parents to make them happy. So one time I, I asked, can we all just sit down and have a conversation? Well, we were able to have a conversation and I asked the parent, you have got to stop and see what's best for the child because they're the ones that's going through the motion. She's going to have to go through this. You're putting undue stress on your child because it's what you want and it makes you look good to everyone else. 
the young lady wanted to go to Juilliard. Mm -hmm. That was her passion. And so it took us some time and some work and some healthy, courageous conversations. But eventually she was able to get the opportunity. She took a couple of AP classes. She was able to drop some, but we enrolled her in some dance classes. And so she had the balance and they opened the lines of communication for parenting. So I would just say for parents, make sure that you're communicating with your babies. And I say babies in mind is 25 years old, but communicate with them, have open lines of communication, but make sure that you're tapping in into what they want to do and give them that safe space to have those conversations. Because I'm sorry, but you've lived your life. You've made your choices, you've made your decisions, and it's a little unfair for us to put those expectations on our children. And then we wonder, why are you so stressed out? Mm -hmm. Why are you so angry all the time? What is the problem? What is happening to our relationship? Mm -hmm. Why don't you want to talk to me? Well, you want me to be who you want me to be, and I don't get a say so in my life. So listening, don't dismiss their feelings and give them a voice. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, yes, to all of that. What are some questions that we can start to ask our kids to start that dialogue, to start that courageous conversation, as you say? Because it is, it takes a little bit of courage to be like, I'm willing to listen. Yes. I'm willing to not judge. I'm willing to just listen. It takes courage, like you're saying. Yes. So what is maybe a couple questions we can even start with to to help them open up a little bit? Well, always check in on their day. How are things going? What's going on? Make sure that you know your friends, mm -hmm. your children's friends. That's very, very important, especially in today's society with everything we have going on. Unfortunately, kids are being kidnapped or sex trafficking, all of that that's going on. Again, my children that are in college, I have their top three friends' cell phone number. So if at any time I cannot reach them, I immediately contact them. And of course, you know, teenagers, my daughter never has her phone charged. So if it's, it's late at night and I can't reach her, I'm calling her, her roommate. And they're like, your mom's on the phone again. But make <laughs> sure you have the number for the top three friends. Check in on them and make sure that you're asking those questions. Like my daughter that's currently in college. She's not doing so well. Her freshman year, she was not doing so well. So I sat down. College is not for everyone. It is okay. I'm looking at your grades. Is there something you need to tell me? I am going to be happy and proud of you and support you no matter what you do. So if it's you want to go do hair or nails, do not go get your degree for me. You have to do what makes you happy. And I think that's important. When we're checking in on them, we see the signs. Why are you upset today? Or can I see your report card? Okay, you're struggling in this area. What's going on in this class? Is it the teacher? Is it the subject matter? How can I help? And that's what I've always said to my children from their youngest age all the way up. The question that I ask when they come to me is, how can I help? And that gives them safe space yeah. to have those conversations and know she's not out to get me. She actually wants to help and see me succeed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So good. Thank you for that. And I would love to shift it a little bit and talk okay. a little bit about you and your, <laughs> what it is that you're doing to have fun. You're doing to make life exciting because you, yeah, you're a mom and you're a doctor and you, you love to see people live their authentic life. But what is it that you're doing for yourself that you're loving right now? A couple of things. Of course, I have a daughter that's in track and a son that's in football. So we're always traveling to the football games, the mm -hmm. track meets. I'm the loudest one in the stand. I'm excited to see them win and, and have fun. But I'm also traveling a lot and speaking. So I love going out and connecting with other women, other parents, and sharing experiences mm -hmm. and encouraging them to maintain their flame. And I've come up with eight strategies that I share with everyone. And I believe those strategies helps us to take baby steps into making sure that we're having the life that we love and enjoy. But maintaining the flame, speaking, and I've written a book and I'm in the process of writing another book, My Soul Isn't For Sale. 
And so while I'm writing that book, it gives me that personal time with Nicole, and then I can recharge and go out and try to make a difference in someone else's life. Oh my gosh. I love that title that my soul is not for sale. Will you yeah. give us a little bit of a little bit of insight into how <laughs> this name came about and just a little bit of insight. You don't have to give it all away, but I just love, I love it so much. Well, I just think because especially with everything that we're dealing with right now, we compromise so much. And sometimes we compromise the things that are important to us. And then we go home when we're away from the crowd and we're away from everyone else. And then we're like, why did I do that? That didn't feel good. That's not me. I should have never done that. So my soul is not for sale. It's just saying my values, my morals, my integrity. I could care less what society is doing and what they're saying and how they feel about me. I have to be true to myself. And that even takes place in the workplace because sometimes you may be asked to do things that you don't feel comfortable doing. And it's just, oh, well, you know, those students will be okay. Just give them a 70 for now. But if you're doing that, are you setting them up for success or for failure? And you have to understand that at the end of the day, that rests on your shoulders. So coming up with what's important to you, coming up with your non-negotiables so your soul will not be for sale. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, and yes. Cannot (laughs) wait to read that because I, like you, we were talking earlier when you are that person who wants to see other people happy, sometimes it's at the expense of yourself. So coming back home to yourself and realizing that you matter too is just the biggest takeaway that this is the biggest takeaway from this conversation is you matter too. And that speaks to that 100%. And you said you had some strategies for igniting the flame. Is there a couple that you would like to share with us? Well, sure, sure. I will, I'll share just three. M is just for your mindset, making sure that your attitude is in the right place. You check your mindset and you're at peace with yourself. So making sure you check on your mindset. A, take action, action on things that are important for you. So even if it's just three steps at the beginning of the day, just saying, these are three items that I'm going to do today for me. And those three steps should be action steps to get you closer to being the person that you want to be. And I, I would say being intentional, you have to be intentional with the relationships with that you have and taking that time for those relationships. So intentional with your children, tapping into their needs and supporting them, intentional with the life that you actually desire. Why am I at this job? Why am I in this marriage? Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Make sure that you're being intentional and you're doing things to make you happy. 100%. This conversation has been so inspiring and you've given us so much and I'm so thankful. Where can the listeners connect with you, support you, get into your world, get in line for this book? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you can visit my website. It's www.maintaintheflame, all one word, dot net. And on there, it'll have the book and all the information and even an opportunity to invite me out to your next conference or next event or training so that I can come and encourage others to maintain their flame. Their flame, wonderful. Well, I always love to end the conversation with giving you the floor based on the conversation that we've had. If there's anything left on your heart to share with the listeners of the Make Life Fun Show. Well, I would just say, you know, time is very precious for each and every one of us. So love on everyone around you, advocate for yourself, but take time to do things that you enjoy. We only get to do this right one time and you want to make the most memories that you can and make sure that you live a life of no regrets. Yes, living our life to the fullest. That is the dream and we get to create it. We get to That's create right. it if we decide and we take those bold, courageous actions, like you were saying, and bold, courageous conversations. Yes. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing all this with us. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. I truly enjoyed it. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makelifefunpodcast.com. 
When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.